Saturday was blocked, uh, it was chaos. One junction, which is five minutes, took me 45 minutes. I phoned up, said I'm going home. Spent four hours in the car, we got beat 3 1. There and back. Nice so, day out. Uh, that nice day out. <laughs> and taking my grandson, which I'd like to, for a nine year old boy these days, three hours in the car is. I took him to the villa, which is the closest one, a um, couple of times recently. And uh, even in an hour, he gets fed up in the back of the car. So. <laughs> But I'm, my plan is to go the, towards the end of the se this season and certainly to go early on in the new stadium. That's my master plan. I'm yeah. definitely going towards the end of uh, this season. I'm looking at the games and my schedule at the moment. You all ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, so yeah, first of all, Matt, what inspired you to produce a film about what it was like? Um, well, I, I was lucky enough to grow up with him. My dad was a, a journalist and, and they were very close friends, so I got to see quite a lot of Bobby as a kid and being a kid and having the England captain pop around the house every now and then was a thrill uh, and it, you know I became a journalist like my father and I, he was uppermost in my contacts book uh, I was very proud of that but even then I realised that you know I would suggest him for things at Sky and they say no we, we don't really need Bobby Moore and that was an attitude I realised that was taken throughout his life or toward the end of his life and I just thought that you have to readjust things and that he deserves a lot more respect than he was afforded and he served the game so well and maybe didn't get what he deserved at the end of it so I think there was a void there that needs filling. Brilliant and like I said yeah, you're a journalist yourself worked for like the Sky TV and BBC what was it like directing a film or producing a film sorry obviously because that's one of the most challenging aspects of your yeah, career. Yeah it's murder I didn't realise <coughs> as a presenter you have producers running around doing all the work where you just smile read a bit of autocue and, and interview the odd person then go home uh, now I'm a producer and I think God's getting his own back because uh, everybody comes to you, everybody's problem ends up at your door and I'm having to work for a living, don't like it at all. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it'll be great when it's done and it's been a challenge as you say and it, it'll be a lovely thing to put on the CV and to have achieved. Yeah, certainly. Now Jeff, you also interviewed for this special film as well. What did you make of Matt's idea when you first heard of it? Fantastic idea, one of our greats, a hundred times for England, captain us in the World Cup. Uh, how long have I got to talk about this? Um, 90 times he captain England, one of the greats. I haven't replaced him really um, in the last 50 years in that position. Um, I had the great privilege of working, playing with him for West Ham in England for over 15 years. So I, I saw him as uh, as close up and personal as any anybody living. Obviously one of the best memories you must have had with Bobby was obviously defeating West Germany 4-2 in the World Cup final. Uh, but what other best memories do you have from with Bobby? Other memories of, I think one of the Best memories I have is Bobby Moore uh, making, uh, giving me a compliment, which uh, Bobby was never wasn't very talkative in terms of paying people compliments. In fact, if you if you upset him, Bobby just raised his eyebrows, and you know you knew he'd done something wrong. He was that, that kind of captain at West Ham in England. But I was in the middle of a hot spell, scoring goals in, in the mid 60s, and we played Sunderland away. We won four one, and I scored a couple. And I was right in the middle of a really purple patch. And after the game, I sat, I sat in a bath, a single bath, not a group bath. And he sidled over to me, sat on the edge of the bath. And Je he said, Jeff, he said, you're effing great at the moment, aren't you? And I, that's, that comment stuck with me forever. <laughs> obviously, Matt, back to you, obviously producing the film. How has the public reacted to your idea, the whole film in general? Oh, well, it's funny because I left Sky, I think, seven years ago to strike out on my own. And uh, it's tough in the freelance world. You have an idea and on a Monday and by Thursday some of the world's leading authorities have told you to go away uh, but in over two years working on this no one said that it's just rolled and rolled everybody you know loved the man and everybody's been really helpful from both of his wives and his daughter Jeff uh, World Cup team everybody's been great now in a sort of summary plot if you can what can football fans expect when they see the ball well most people should be aware of his story but maybe what they're not aware of is the troubles he faced he had two bouts with cancer the last one actually killed him. Um, the issues he had with the authorities, as I said before, not really looking after him and affording the respect that he had. Right from the start, uh, I believe, Jeff would know more than me, that he wasn't a natural born athlete. And he was called Chubby as a kid, yet he worked and worked and worked and through the help of people like Malcolm Allison, uh, he became the sort of player that he became. It, it just a, I think it's a great story. What I would hope is to, to let people know more about the man and also the lows which mirrored the highs. Now Jeff, if say Bobby were perhaps born 45 years later playing professional football now, would he still be regarded as one of the best players in the world? Easily, without a question. It's very difficult sometimes to put in context about, you know, then and, then and now when you talk about the greats in, in any profession, but uh, uh, I'm absolutely convinced that he could play 
um, as well. He'd still be the best player, best defensive player we have in this country today. He was that good. He, uh, he had a great attitude, um, a great composure, a willingness to learn, great leadership, uh, took responsibility like no other. Lots of stories about that I've seen, clips on film where he took responsibility. He would, he, I don't think today that we still had anybody in that position and as a leader of our, of our team. Definitely. Now what sort of character, you've already said, you know, given the compliment with Liverpool Best and Cranberry with Bobby, what sort of character was he on and off the field as well? Well on the field he was a complete professional professional but he was also quite immaculate on the field as well and off the field and uh, a great comment about um, we played against Manchester City once a guy called Mike Summerby their centre centre forward who got quite pally with Bobby in the games at, at that time and uh, Mike used to say about Maury he's the only player he knew that ironed his money which I th and that was 40 years ago he said that I saw Mike when West Ham played Man City a couple of seasons ago at the game and Mike came out with another Moro. He said, he's the only guy that gets out of a bath and is not wet. And that's how people saw him, how, how his immaculateness, if you like. And the last person in the dressing room to put his shorts on before you, you went out the door. So that, that's, that just sums him up. Always believed how important it was to be the, the, you know, the captain of England, uh, a very prestigious uh, role, and he behaved accordingly, both on and off the pitch. Brilliant. Now, obviously, you are one of footballers to be knighted congratulations uh, is that the same level of recognition that you think Bobby deserves oh absolutely in fact people today uh, sometimes refer to Moro and they call him Sir Bobby uh, Sir Bobby Moore I think they almost automatically think for what he achieved looking at his life and uh, what he did both at West Ham and, 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 our, and England that he should be knighted so and I think and that's probably uh, earlier what uh, Matt said that um, perhaps didn't really deserve the rec get the recognition he really deserved when you look at the, the great players that have, um, are not excluding me on that side of it, in the past really have, have been knighted, uh, Stanley Matthews and, and Tom Finney and so on, you think he would be up there in, in, in terms of that recognition? Certainly, thank you. Uh, how much time have we got left? Just for that one. Um, okay, that's brilliant. Um, we go for, if we can do these sort of simple quizzes, both of you, is that all okay? Which one wants to go first? Go on. Yeah, fantastic. You can think about it. Yeah, it's not going to help, is it, if I don't yeah. have a question? Get your fix. Ah, you can answer my ones. <laughs> 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 don't get the questions, but questions about a lot between the two or three. Uh, between the two of you, there's 17 for you, just in case you get through. <laughs> Only in six seconds. And uh, from Matt on West Ham 18. So uh, just in case you do three seconds of question. Um, but yeah, this one's all on Manchester 66 World Cup. You know, maybe a little bit more in your, in your career. Um, but yeah, just pass it to any answers. Quick answers. Yeah, if you can. Uh, they're relatively quick. Because we've only got a minute, okay. Yeah, exactly. So if okay. I do take some time on one, I'll only answer one, okay. Yeah, well, so you got can it. pass if you don't know one. Just okay. Answer most men. All good? Yep. Yes. Ready? Name two of the. F I want to say. The clock's running. Yeah. Name two of the three teams England placed in the group stage in the 96 World Cup. Oh, Uruguay and, uh, and Mexico. Besides West Germany, which other country did you score against? Uh, Greece. Which other England player scored against West Germany in the final? Uh, uh, Martin. <laughs> oh, in our team. Beg your pardon, sorry. Oh, Martin. Oh, I thought who you meant the Germans. Oh. Who was the top dog scorer at the 96 World Cup, 1966 World Cup? Um, Eusebio. How many goals did he score? Eight. How many international caps did you earn for England? 49. How many international goals did you score? It's a memory test, isn't it? Yeah. Science <laughs> test. Jesus. What, sorry, again? <laughs> How many international goals did you score? Uh, 24 in 49 games. How many countries competed in the 1966 World Cup? Uh, 16. Which country came third in the 1966 World Cup? Russia. How many goals were scored at the World Cup finals? Uh, no idea. How many goals did Bobby Charlton score? Uh, three. Brilliant. Fantastic. That's your one done. All good. You should see some questions there. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'll sing the Germans. <laughs> I'm going to give one long answer to the first one. About a 60 second <laughs> answer. That'll do it. Yeah, one, no, sorry. Yeah, okay, cool. Sorry, yeah, should I take that back? So I just. Oh, sorry, just for the thank, you. thank you. Oh. Did very well, I have to admit. Um, oh, I have to admit. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the compliment. Yeah, thank, <laughs> you, thank you. Uh, that was so a memory test there. I thought we were. Some of you yeah, man's life for Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So, Matt, you ready for your best friend? Good luck. Good oh luck. Yes, good thanks, luck. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Whisper to me if you mind. Already? Yep. When was the club formed? 
No idea. Who was West Ham's top goal scorer in all competitions last season? <sighs> Not Carroll, because he was never there. Pass. How many goals did he score? Eight. <laughs> At which club did Slavan Vilic manage before West Ham? Uh, Besiktas. Who wears a number seven shirt? Uh, I don't know. What year did West Ham win the European Cup? No, not the European Cup, Cup Winners Cup. 65. Who is the club's all time leading goal scorer? Akabeni. Who is second on that list? Cotty. Uh, name one of the French internationals within the West Ham squad this season. Sorry? Uh, name one of the French internationals in West Ham squad this season. Uh, Kayate. Which position uh, did West Ham finish last season? Ooh. 15th. How many points did they finish with? Don't know. Who is West Ham's club record signing? Carroll. Who do West Ham face on the f on the final day of the season? Don't know. That was really good. So if you don't use that, I'll be really grateful. <laughs> I'm no good with facts and figures. No, he's not going on. Victor's got that right. Matt Jarvis. Big Watson, no leading golf scorer. Yeah. Sixty-five. Second on the second on the list. Yes. I'm sorry about that, Jeff. Didn't get you. <laughs> Absolute rubbish. Right. If you print that, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> did you did you ask all those questions on my list? All of them? No, not quite. No, you um, you you missed it. Who else? Right. Um, what else did we have? What was the name of the? One against Argentina. The one against uh, who else? I score against. Did you? Yes. You missed you that one. Did you? Score against Argentina. Yeah. Not you didn't ask that, did you? Yes, Put I did. Yes. Besides West Germany, because the country did score against it in Greece, I think. Oh, Greece, yeah. no, in the World Cup final. Oh, yes. Could it be anybody? Oh, in the World Cup, in the World. Yes, I'm with you. Yeah, sorry. Uh, there you go. I missed um, the World Cup bit. What was the date of the 1966 World Cup final? July 30th, uh, 1966. Who was the captain for the West Germany in the World Cup final? Uh, Vesela. Vesela, I don't. And what day was it played on the World Cup final? Saturday. Should have got. Should have put those at the top for you, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I got all Where the was others. it played? Wembley. Wembley. Who got more, him or I? <laughs> uh, I, oh, I think you won on that one. I guess I have to guess, Jack. Uh, if I could just get a photo with both of you, is that okay for our social media post? Obviously, it's embargoing until tomorrow. That's all understood. Um, do you want me to do the honours? Yes, please. 